Hold your breath, everyone. We're nearly there. Well done, Steve. Who brought an invisible stick along? I mean, of course I'm going to kick it. Hey? Eh? Right. Hello, everyone. This is my dream build, my custom build, all the best bits I could get my hands on. Giant Trancy. A custom paint job on it, a beautiful custom paint job, like took my breath away. I spoke to Giant about it a little while ago and I sort of said, they said, what do you want? And I said, something metal themed, heavy metal themed. Um, so they've gone with this deep purple colour. The bright yellow graphics, of course, complement all the Olin suspension on it. And it is, yeah, it's absolutely stunning. I'm absolutely pumped with it. Hope called it the Cadbury's 12. There is a similarity there as well but I'm just gonna call it the Purple Prince because I love the Purple Prince. Yeah, she's, she's a beautiful bike. It's my first full 29 e-bike. Um, you know, my, all the other e-bikes I've ever owned have had mullet, which is nothing wrong with it. But for the sort of ride that I'm gonna use this for, I'm pumped to have two 29 inch wheels. This'll be my kind of cross country bike where I live in the Chilterns. I do feel a bit overbiked on the big travel rain sometimes. So this is gonna be perfect. For, for my everyday kind of mountain bike and that I do around my house. 150 fork on it, 140 mil back end. And you know, I did a rain e-bike check a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago now, when I hadn't really ridden that. I have been now, I can tell you a bit more about it. You know, the 85 Newton meter motor in it, the heart of the bike is incredible. The sync drive motor, as I said, no display. You don't need when you turn it on and off there, gives you your power output on the top there. It's another little, couple of buttons there to change the power up and down that's all you need I think I don't I love the minimalistic nature of the setup of this bike so in here is the game changing battery an 811 watt hour battery in there and I did ride it about a little bit just to test it before I brought it out today I haven't actually really ridden it but doing manuals on it and stuff I did notice it was a bit harder than it felt on the rain and I thought, I wonder why, and I actually, being an uh, electric mountain bike geek, took out this 811 battery. It's exactly the same dimensions as the 625 I've got in the rain, so you can switch them between the bikes. But it's one pound heavier, which I was surprised. Just one pound heavier for, what, 300 watts of power. But it's amazing how much difference that makes. You know, like you can actually feel that pound, of course, all the weight is right at the front of the bike. but. For me, I want the bike on the weight, not on me. So that works really well. And when we're talking about the weight on the bike, hang on there. Seamless. For those big days in the saddle, and I do feel that 811 watt hours, even on full boost, boost mode, is probably gonna be more or less enough. You can get this, like a piggyback battery that goes in there. It comes with two clips. You clip it on, you just put it on when you want, when you don't. And that'll give me another 250 watts of power as well. So this bike will have well over the 1,000 watt hour. I mean, that's insane. That's a big day out by anyone's standards, I'd say. And if I go to the mountains where there's big climbing, doing adventure rides like I like to do, then that and that, yeah, I'm, I'm there, and I? And it was really one of the big reasons for me to go back to the world's biggest bike manufacturer, to be at the very forefront of technology that they are, of course, with all the bikes and all the disciplines they do, but they are really at the forefront of e-bike technology, which is important to me because I love them. And they just recently released the world's lightest full power e-bike, which is one of these with this new super light battery in it. So that'll be a game changer as well. But so it's a, a short travel e-bike I've ever had, as I said, and you know, we got that 140 back end, 150 fork. I've only had 180s before. When I set up a set of Olins, I literally ring Alex at Olin's, who sends me exactly what I need. 250 in the bottom, in the bottom there, in the ramp. 130 in the top. And low speed compression, six to ten on the top there, on the blue to try it. They like the Olin's like the low speed compression. I don't mind having it on at all. I leave the high speed open. But yeah, again, I'll play with those pressures a little bit. If you're ever doing a bottom valve, make sure the top valve is empty. There you go, tip from me. Okay, well, let's start at the front of the bike then. Front wheel, 2.6. On the e-bikes, I love the wider tires. I don't, I had 2.4s on the rain. I prefer the 2.6 Michelins. This is an E-specific front tire, a slightly heavier car carcass than the sidewalls that they have on the uh, Enduro tires. You know, the thing I've noticed with the Michelin tyres is, of course, the grip is superb. Everything's mint about them. Of course it is, it's a Mitch. 
I love the graphics on the tires as well. It makes the bike look nicer as well, I think. But technically, it seems like you can run them tires a little bit softer. I've got 22 pound in that front tire at the moment, 25 in the back. It's about three pound less than I would usually run with other tires. So, you know, but they don't roll around on the tire. So you've got that extra grip, but the side will support you. You don't get that horrible movement. Yeah, they're absolutely amazing. So that Michelin tire is on this Envy wheels I've been using this year. We've got the Hope Pro 5 hubs in the middle of them. The rims themselves, I'm using the M9s on this in the rain. You know, a heavy duty um, rim. They're more expensive and they do have cheaper rims as well, which I have got on other bikes. And, you know, to be honest, they feel exactly the same as the expensive ones. If I won't, I won't tell a lie, I can't tell the difference. And you know, they are, they've been a revelation in that I've never had them before, but they're so much faster to ride on. And that's the truth. If you push, you go. Um, the front end of the bike all just feels a bit more positive. I think for me though, you know, the biggest thing about these wheels is just how reliable they are. Cause I like to go remote places and ride on the e-bike where it takes me some weird places I'd never normally get to. You know, and I was out with Brendan the other day, who arguably is harder on wheels than me, just a bit. And in two years, on one set of wheels he's had in his downhill bike, he's never even had to tighten a spoke. So, I mean, that says it all. Yes, they, you know, there's a cost to them. You know, they're not cheap, are they? Carbon wheels, Envy carbon wheels, the original and the best. They come with a three year no quibble warranty, even if the dog chews for them, you'll get a new pair. It decreases after that. Five years manufacturing warranty. And to me, I mean, the way I'm going to have these wheels like and ride on them, I feel like they're wheels for life. So it's an investment, but you know, to me, absolutely worth it. Again, just look how flash they look as well. Amazing. I got the 800 mil carbon Hope bars on again, add into that. Again, you know, it's weird. You can't quite put your finger on how they feel different, how they feel better. They do feel better, more positive, maybe less fatigue-y. I, when, when carbon bars came out, I heard all the downhillers, one of the, well, a downhiller who remained nameless said to me, I couldn't get to the bottom of the downhill without carbon bars. My arm pump was too bad. Now, I don't know about that, but I do know that I, when I was in Rotorua the other day, I did like a 12 minute descent, which is quite a long time for me these days. And I didn't get arm pump or anything. And perhaps I was less fatigued. I don't know, but I'm loving them. No problems with them whatsoever. They look mint again. So I'm loving these bars. As you can see, I do run quite a lot of stem spaces under there because what are these? I think these are 20 mil rise or something, but pressure's been added on. The mold has been made at Hope Technology. And apparently I'm going up there to lay up my own 35, seamless, 35 mil riser bar. Woody, book it in, I'm coming up. I'm gonna make my own carbon bars. I'm quite excited about that. So, but then, you know, I, the only reason I like a rise on a bar actually is not just to make it taller. Also, I like to be able to sweep my bars back a bit and, you know, just, just play with the position a bit. So I got, I'm also got the 35 mil stem on, which of course I'm now sold on after poo-pooing it when I went up to Hope a few months ago. Yeah, 50s, <laughs> yesterday's news, 35's where it's at. Uh, at the back end, I got the Hope V4 brakes, front and back of course, loving them. You know, continuing to impress. Got red pads in these, I think I had green in the rain, the race pad, this is a harder wearing pad but grabbing some brake out the car park, getting over here this morning. Full power, nothing to worry about. Running the 11 speed on it as well on the e-bike, I prefer that. Um, a slower gear change, slightly thicker chain, I believe. I've had no trouble snapping them. Got the Olin's coil shock on again. I could have put an air on it, but I'm gonna stick with coil on all my bikes because I prefer them. We've got the Hope 155 cranks, shorter than I'm used to. I'm sold on them. I, you know, after, again, I was running one like 165. So to go 10 mil shorter on my cranks was massive. It took a few rides to get used to it, but I'm there. We've got the Pembury Pro pedals on again. Now, as I said in the last video, as you can see, like they're, they've got these new bushings in them that stop them really free spinning. And I, to me, they're perfect. But I did wonder if people who ride, you know, conventional bikes might feel like that drag would slow them down. Let me know in the comments below because a few people on the last video did
did say they expect their pedals to have drag and actually going back to when I was a kid and the bearings all dried out and the pedals used to spin mental and you used to shin yourself all the time, they're way better like that. So yeah, but there it is, 29 front and back, full power, massive battery in her. That is my Trance E dream build. Like or subscribe and uh, see you later.